If you've had an endoscopy because you have acid reflux or a hiatal hernia, you've been likely tested for H. pylori, Helicobacter pylori, which is an infection, a bacterial infection you can get in your stomach. Now, I'm often asked, why is it that my endoscopy said I did not have an H. pylori infection, but then later I went on to do a stool test and they said, I did have an H. pylori infection. So obviously a person gets confused and says, who, who didn't know what they were doing, right? How can I have it and not have it? And so there's a very good reason why this discrepancy exists. And it's very important to know if you have H. pylori because it can lead to cancer. It's a very serious bacteria. Sometimes it's not serious. Sometimes you have a form of it that's easy to treat, but, but if you don't have that form, you really need to know. So let's start in with the endoscopy, what happens. So uh, a biopsy is taken of um, a couple of areas of your stomach, not the complete stomach, and also uh, it's a biopsy. It's a, little, it's a little piece, and then they look for this infection, this H. pylori. Uh, what can happen is that you can have what's called a patchy distribution of the infection. It's not like if you have it, it coats the entire aspect of your stomach. That's not the way it goes. So 30 to 50% of the time, it can be missed. You can have the infection, but it's missed on endoscopy just because of this patchy distribution. So um, that's one, it's called a sampling bias. And um, the other thing that can happen is that if somebody is using PPIs, which if, if someone's had a history of acid reflux, then they're likely on a PPI, and that um, diminishes the effectiveness of the test as well. So that's just something to know. It's not that somebody did something wrong. It's a liability of the test itself, a liability of the endoscopy itself. It's only, um, it's missing it up to 30 to 50% of the time. So that's almost a, 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 toying, a coin toss. Uh, so up to, half, up to half of the time it's missed. So let's go on to different testing, what we do here at Root Cause, which is stool testing and, and why that is very different. So one thing that happens with a stool test is that it captures uh, the H. pylori from the entire aspect of the stomach. So that, that entire uh, aspect is shed and it's available for uh, analysis. They also use PCR DNA testing, which is highly sensitive, highly specific, and it's able to detect H. pylori even at a very low volume of the infection. So you don't have to have this raging infection. You can have a small volume and it will detect it, which is great because you want to know early on if you have it. It's also not affected by the use of PPIs, antibiotics, or bismuth. If you're not familiar with bismuth, um, when people take Pepto-Bismol, that's bismuth. So sometimes people just, you know, are uncomfortable and they drink Pepto-Bismol, and so that can affect the test, being on antibiotics, PPIs, but not for the stool test. That, that does not affect the outcome at all, which is, which is great. Um, because with an endoscopy, if you're taking a PPI, uh, or again, the antibiotic or the bismuth, for two to four weeks, it's really compromising the ability to detect it. So just an, another aspect that's diminishing the efficiency and effectiveness of the test during an endoscopy. So it's got a lot of things that are gonna limit, limit um, accuracy. Okay, so then the other thing that happens is that uh, the DNA test for the stool test can not only see live bacteria, but it can see recently dead bacteria. And you might say, well, if it's dead, <laughs> who cares? But these bacteria have a life cycle where they're, they're, they're first born, and then they're, they get to their most virulent state, and then they die off. They lay eggs and they die off. So it's kind of gross to think about, but 
an egg isn't isn't you know kind of it's not hatched yet and it's not detectable so a recently dead bacteria still shows you that you have an active infection so that's why that's important um, what else did I want to tell you about oh really important is that the stool testing detects what's called virulent genes now there's um, there's something called a CAG A gene. So this is genetic material of the H. pylori, of the bacteria. So you're assessing what kind of genes the particular infection you have has and or possesses. So the CAG A, C-A-G, capital A, um, is, is more linked to cancer. So you definitely want to know if you have that type. The VAC A, V A C capital A, is associated with stomach ulcers. So uh, ulcer formation. So you know this this all it is sort of raising awareness of of how serious this infection is. Uh, also if you've had if you're a patient who's had chronic gastritis so for a long time you're more likely to be at risk for stomach cancer. So you want to know that. So it's all about this early detection. Now, what are symptoms of H. pylori? And this, where it, this is where it gets a little insidious and in how you can really miss it because the symptoms are bloating, pain in the upper you know, stomach area, early satiety, meaning you get full quickly, uh, you can have nausea, uh, you can have reflux symptoms. So a lot of times an H. pylori infection is mistaken for just reflux. You know, I, I have acid reflux, and but you're not you're not treating the H. pylori. You're treating the reflux, and so that's dangerous because the longer you have it, the more you know you are at risk for stomach cancer, really destroying your stomach because it destroys your stomach's very ability to make acid, which is what your stomach's job is. So it's not surprising that the longer you have an H. pylori infection, much very similar to PPI drugs, so now you're diminishing your absorption of magnesium and calcium and iron and B12, uh, and then leading to the various side effects that, that I discuss often in other videos if you want to look that up. Uh, it's important to also know that H. pylori is very contagious. So if a member of your family is diagnosed with it, it's very important that the whole family gets tested because it can be shared pretty easily. Uh, saliva is a way to share it, uh, sharing utensils or drinking glasses. So uh, it is very important to know who in the family has it. And then that's what we do here. We test the whole family and then encourage everybody to, you know, wash your hands a lot, not share utensils, not share drinking glasses, etc. Okay, I think that was the biggest, I think that was everything I wanted to talk to you about. So, um, know that an endoscopy can miss it, and it's, it's not the technique of the gastroenterologist, it's just inherent in the test. Know that the stool testing with the PCR um, to look at, uh, oh, I think I did not mention, sorry, is antibiotic resistance. That's very important. So another thing that the testing does through the stool test, it, it will see if your, um, your particular H. pylori that you have is antibiotic resistant. And that's very important because um, there's something called a triple therapy, which is sort of the standard treatment for H. pylori and uh, clarithromycin is, is a common antibiotic. There's a couple that they use. They also use bismuth, as I was talking about earlier, a peptobismol. And so uh, if you're resistant, it means you know, this, this treatment is not going to work for you at all. So it's very important. And again, that's something we've been doing forever. Uh, we also use a, a gentler treatment. Um, we tend to stay away from the antibiotics and still get get good efficacious annihilation of the H. pylori, which is, which is the goal. But um, the company we use also says if there's certain herbs that it's resistant to as well. So it really guides your therapy into what's really going to kill this thing. And you want to wait a good four weeks, 
get retested. It could be four to six weeks, but get retested and really make sure you've eliminated it. And, um, and then still, you know, again, the family members, everybody has to be compliant. You want to test them at the same time. Uh, but there is re-exposure possible, especially if several family members have it. So just want to be very aware of that. Um, now, getting back to those symptoms, what do those symptoms sound like if you're somebody who um, has acid reflux or you have a hiatal hernia, right? The discomfort around the stomach, you get full really fast, you have acid reflux type symptoms. It sounds like hiatal hernia syndrome. It sounds like acid reflux, but the symptoms are being caused by the H. pylori. Now, I'm not saying you can't have both. You can definitely have a couple of factors coming together, uh, but my urge to you is that you really get tested for Helicobacter pylori. You get tested properly and you have a very comprehensive test done. You, you know, the retest is pretty easy. You don't have to do all the genetics and all of that, but that first test, it's worth the time, effort, and money to find out all the comprehensive facets and personality of this H. pylori infection if you have it so that you know how to treat it and if you are at higher risk, because if you are, we really have to be very vigilant. So I, I hope that answered questions about H. pylori and why sometimes you see it and sometimes you do not. And also, if you're somebody who has symptoms and you've been told you don't have it from an endoscopy, again, really worth your while to get the proper test and know for sure. So I hope this was helpful. And um, if you enjoy the content on this channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're trying to increase our subscribers so that more people are exposed to this information and can get the help that they need. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and I'll talk to you soon.